Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, ladies, we all know this. Uh, media has grown to be such a huge part of our daily lives. I mean, it entertains us, lets us stay in touch with family and friends, and of course, allows us to explore places and ideas outside of our own little circles, right? That's right. And you might say our next guest is a master of media. He's a member of the Broadcasters Hall of Fame, Music and Entertainers Hall of Fame, and the owner of Star Worldwide Networks. And if that wasn't enough, he's also an award-winning author. Please welcome to Main Street Living, Dave Pratt. Dave, thanks so much for making time for us today. Well, Hello. Quincy, Cheryl, Danielle, it takes three hosts to handle me these days, so I love it. So <laughs> it does. Thank it you does. for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> You're obviously a very busy man. You're also a man of many talents, but you spent more than 30 years as a radio personality. What did you enjoy most about that part of your career? Oh, just having fun. You know, I like to entertain and radio seemed to be an easy way to do that. I could be creative every day. And I was lucky because the stations that I was on gave me complete autonomy just to cause some trouble and have some fun. Uh, but probably the thing that I value most are all the relationships, all the friendships that I made over those 30 years and I mean hundreds of thousands of friends and a lot of them still follow me and still keep in touch and I'm just blessed to have those type of relationships so that's probably the best part. Hundreds of thousands of friends I don't even know how you have all them on Facebook I think there's a limit there so you've got too yeah. many friends even for Facebook. <laughs> you know what I kind of learned on that Cheryl because on, on Facebook if you have a personal page it'll go to 5,000 but um, what they call a fan page, and I hate that term fan, but that's what they call it. It's unlimited. So my fan page now has whatever, 100,000, 150,000 or something like that. Nice. Well, there you go. I mean, you have been a busy guy. You were also part of a band. What was that like? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should thank you for bringing that up or not. <laughs> uh, somehow over the years, I became friends with James Brown. Yes, the original sex machine, James Brown. And he would do interviews for his movies like Rocky and Blues Brothers and Dr. Detroit. Well, anyway, one day we were on the air and I said, hey, anybody can do a band. You get up there, you jump around, you do some moves and you're James Brown. I could do that. And he goes, well, why don't you? And I said, okay, challenge accepted. I'm going to start a band. What should I call it? And he had an album out called Sex Machine. He said, your band's name is officially Dave Pratt and the Sex Machine Band. <laughs> so you guys, I started it on a joke. I don't play any instrument. I don't sing. I, I Before that time, I, I wasn't a songwriter. And it just blew up and it exploded. And before long, we were playing arenas and stadiums. We were headlining concerts. We had four albums and home videos. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun. But it, it was just an entertainment type band. Wow. Well, I have to imagine, uh, are you still playing with them or what's the situation? <laughs> no, uh, uh, the statute of limitations uh, it's still going, so I'm waiting for that to run out. Uh, but no, no, I'm, I'm not doing the band anymore. And that's out of courtesy to all of my followers. I, I can't torture them like that. <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot has changed over the years. I know about 10 years ago, you started to see media change and the radio business wasn't necessarily keeping up. Tell us what was it like uh, and how you came up with the idea for Star Worldwide Networks? Well, you know what, Danielle, I, I, I never wanted to be one of those old radio guys just trying to stick around and stay relevant. Like you asked about the band. I never wanted to be um, Bald Van Halen or Fat Motley Crue. I, I didn't want to do that. I want people to remember the best times in their life and the generations they were in. So with my own career, I saw some of that kind of passing. And at the same time, as radio was declining, this little thing called the internet was really climbing. So I just took advantage of it. And I recognized it a little bit earlier than most when it comes to podcasts. And we started Star Worldwide Networks about 11 years ago. And we started with one show, and before the end of the first year, we had over 200 shows all around the nation. Whoa. Wow. I mean, yeah, you are busy there. And what other content can we find on your podcast and Star Worldwide Networks? Oh, uh, Cheryl, we have everything. We have legal, medical, entertainment, mm -hmm. music, comedy, cooking, coaching, uh, women's empowerment, uh, men's shows, uh, sports, a lot of sports, athletics, any you name it. It's pretty much like any network. When you go to a major network, they're going to have all types of content, all types of programming, so they can try to please all of their viewers at some point in time. We're the same way. 
Nice. So why is it, do you think, podcasts and kind of on-demand content have become so popular? Mm -hmm. Well, you already said on-demand. That is the king today, and that's why Netflix is so big. You guys probably can binge watch your favorite shows in one weekend. I know I've done that. But it's this thing right here. It's in the palm of your hand. And mm -hmm. that's where media is today. That's where people want to go. People are very um, ADD today. They, they don't have a lot of time. They want what they want when they want it. If they want news, they aren't going to wait for five, six and nine o'clock or 10 o'clock. They're just going to go to their cell phone and they're going to get news from whatever source that they choose to get it from. The same with podcasts. They don't want to be told what time a radio show is going to be on. They just want to listen to their favorite content anytime they want, whether that's driving down the road or sitting at home or sitting out back on the patio. Doesn't matter if it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon, they're in control. Today, the consumer's in control. It used to be that as a personality, we were in control and we would tell viewers and listeners mm. when we want them to watch us. That's changed. Now they're in control all because of this. So do you think that's a good or a bad thing? And where do you think media is going in the future? A little bit of both, Cheryl. I mean, it's good because people can consume media in different ways. It's bad because a lot of people are irresponsible with media mm -hmm. and it leaves it up to the consumer to try to decipher which is good, which is bad, which is factual, which is false, which is fake news, which is real news. A consumer has to decide what sources do I trust? So we're leaving that to the trust of the consumer. So it's good and bad. I totally believe in freedom of every kind, especially media. But I also believe that the consumer has some responsibility as well. Absolutely. Well, uh, I want to ask you, of course, about your autobiography behind the mic, 30 Years in Radio. You turned it into an audiobook, and it's free. Why did you write down your stories and why is it available for free? You are very sweet to ask about that. So I'm a cancer survivor and we came out with the hardbound copy. It sold out pretty quick in, in Barnes and Noble and Amazon and Borders and all those proceeds went to the American Cancer Society. Well, 10 years later, I had started Star Worldwide Network. So there's another couple chapters of the evolving story that needed to be told. So we did it in Star Worldwide Network's fashion because we do audiobooks. So we produced it into a living story that has music and sound effects. So you can hear everything. When I'm talking to James Brown, you can hear the James Brown in the back. Or when I talk about my band stories, you can hear the music. When I'm interviewing Charlie Watts, who uh, recently passed away from the Rolling Stones, you can hear the Rolling Stones in the back. It just brings everything to life and audiobooks are huge now. As far as being free, thank you for asking. I just want to do something for my listeners to say thank you. Uh, and I just think it's a nice way to do it because they've been on the journey with me. I couldn't have done it without them. So now they have a free story uh, that they can hopefully get some laughs anytime they want with. It's a nice way Only to do that. Only a radio guy would think about that too with all the sounds. That sounds great. You know what yeah. else is great? It turns into a really nice um, scrapbook of dad for my kids. So oh, no. some someday, no matter what happens, they have their dad's story in his voice. And oh, so my grandkids, I and that. it's, I, I started doing it for them when I had cancer, not to get too deep here, but mm -hmm. I wanted them to know the true story because sometimes media that has covered me has gotten it wrong. And mm -hmm. I wanted them to know the truth. Well, that's what actually started the book. Uh, I so love now that. they have it in dad's own voice. Wow. That is the cutest. And we are wrapping up here. So where can our viewers go to learn more about you, your book, your podcast and everything else? Probably the best way is just go to starworldwidenetworks.com. You'll see the audio book there. All of our shows are free to listen to. Everything we do is mobile friendly. You don't even need an app. Mm -hmm. Just go to starworldwidenetworks.com. And thank you for giving me the chance to plug that. I really appreciate it. Oh, Dave, thank you so much. You are a true gem. We appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you. All right. We've got so much more coming up on Main Street Living. Next, we will talk about investing with a purpose. You don't want to miss it.